This current pandemic has brought, let's just call it strange days for a lot of us. And for some of us, we might even be experiencing anxiety for the first time. So I'm here today in this new kind of virtual way of being together with Steve Jordans. He's a psychology professor at the University of Toronto Scarborough. Hi, Steve. Hey, Sam, great to be with you. Now, before we get into it all, can you talk to us a little bit about what anxiety is and what it feels like? I'm no stranger to anxiety, I've had it for years, but can you tell us a little bit scientifically what it's like? Yeah, and, and I think the, the best way to understand it is to kind of think about why why we have this reaction at all. Um, and it's really the, the act of a system that's goal is to keep us alive in the face of sudden threat. What this does is it triggers our body out of a kind of relaxation mode and into a do something mode. So all of our, our breathing becomes faster, our heart rate becomes faster, our eyes dilate, they get wider to take in more light. Um, and we basically, all our muscles become super strong. And the idea of that system is to help you either fight that predator, take it on, or flee, get the heck away from it. That's what it's supposed to do. The problem in the current situation is the bear ain't going away. And so now this system is being engaged for a long period of time, which it was never meant to do. Uh, but that's what we're all feeling. And it's literally our body screaming at us, do something. So let's jump into our three questions. Okay. First, I gotta ask, and I'm gonna take notes on the answers to this one. What's something in your expert opinion, some easy things that people can do when they're in that anxious moment? Yeah, okay, so if you think of that anxious moment as reflecting a, a feedback circle between your mind and your body, literally if your mind senses threat, it puts your body into this mode and that makes your mind almost more worried uh, and it becomes this vicious circle. So you can cut it off um, by controlling your mind. A lot of the things in our mind come in our mind through the environment, through things we see here or whatever. And so we can use our environment to literally control our mind. So as a negative example of that, if you watch the news all day, which we're really tempted to do uh, because we want that information, <laughs> but you're constantly exposing your mind to the threat. Uh, and so that's gonna increase your anxiety. But if you have some other activity, for me it, lately it's writing songs in GarageBand. When I go do that, the rest of the world disappears. Uh, and so learning what those activities are and, and making sure you use those, if you're feeling anxious, do something that will pull your mind away from all this COVID stuff. Give yourself a break. Now, I understand that you've made a really awesome online course to help people manage their mental health. Can you tell us a little bit about that and some of the response that you've gotten to this? Uh, what I really like is to be able to give advice in context. So, so with the course, it gave me enough time. It's three weeks. It's really about three hours of, of lecture, so to speak. Um, but it's, it's a chance for me to really explain what the system is and how it works so that people understand why they feel anxious in the first place. And then we talk about how you can push yourself to relaxation as one way to avoid anxiety or to, to sort of banish it. And then we talk about the things we talked about with you, distraction and things. Um, and then finally we get into the issue of how do you live in isolation and bring these things into play to manage your, your anxieties. Uh, and, and the cool thing about the course too is there's the information itself, but there's also a discussion forum behind it. So this provides an opportunity for people to all socially connect, which is by the way, one of the points I make. We don't want to be socially distancing. We want to be physically distancing. We want to be socially connecting. And so this is an opportunity and it's really nice to see them all helping each other. We have a lot of healthcare workers, which really makes me feel good. Uh, when the healthcare worker says I come home at the end of the day and, and this has been helping me to deal with the situation. It's been a great response and yeah, really glad I did it. Finally, what are some of the potential long-term impacts of this type of social distancing we've been seeing uh, with respect to mental health? The honest answer is we've never done a psychology experiment, anything like this, where people have been able to be socially interacting with others, but physically distanced. But the good news from psychology is we can keep those social connections and we should. Um, we need to find ways like this <laughs> or telephones yeah. um, to literally emotionally connect with other human beings. If you can factor that into your day in isolation, I'm going to spend so much time socially outreaching, uh, maybe in a discussion forum like I described, but better yet to call somebody who could also use it uh, from their side and feel like you're helping that person. Um, that's a very powerful thing. This has been an incredibly insightful, Steve. Thank you so much for taking the time. I hope that you stay safe. And before we go, I got to ask, can you close us out with a little singing of Strange Days? <laughs>
Strange days. <laughs> okay, you want you want the doors. <laughs> Strange days have found us. <laughs> it's a very good song, by the way. Strange days attract us. Thank you so much. <laughs>